So welcome to Techno Dad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're going to be installing OMV5 into a virtual machine. And so basically, we need a little prep here. And so in the comments down, or in the description down below, I'm going to show you uh, point to a video where you can go and change your BIOS settings. So the first thing you need to do change your BIOS settings so that you enable virtualization. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in 32-bit. We want it to be 64-bit. Uh, next, what we'll do is we'll download VirtualBox, install OMV into VirtualBox, and then set up our uh, OMV inside VirtualBox for success. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you like. And if you haven't already subscribed, and here we go now. And a special thanks to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Thank you. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is go to OpenMediaVault.org, go to Downloads, click on here, and then download the latest ISO of OpenMediaVault. And at this time it's 505. We click on that. And then we're going to click on the AMD 505 version. And then that will download. And once that's downloading, we're going to go to virtualbox.org and we're going to download VirtualBox 6. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we have to change our BIOS settings if you haven't already to enable virtualization. Otherwise, you'll be stuck with only a 32-bit system for VirtualBox. So you can't be 64-bit. And I'll leave a link to my video which does that. So once we have Open Media Vault downloaded, and what we're going to do is open up VirtualBox. And so you may need to update or add the extra software in here. And so I obviously already have it installed. So to install Open Media Vault 5, we're going to click on New. And we're going to call this Open Media Vault 5 new. For type, we're going to go down to Linux. For version, we're going to go to Debian 64, then click Next. We're going to raise our memory to 2 gigabytes, create a virtual hard disk, and then create. And we're going to have this a virtu VHD, virtual hard disk. Then click Next. Dynamically allocated. And so 8 gigabytes is the minimum. We're going to increase it a little bit to 16 gigabytes and then click Create. And so now we have the OMV5 new there. And then we're going to go to Settings. And we're going to go to System, get rid of a floppy disk, look at Processors. And if you have multiple processors, you can add in two. Uh, we're going to skip all those, go down to storage. So the first thing is we're going to click on the empty there and we're going to click the down arrow. And so for here, choose a virtual op optical disk and that will open a window. And you can click on your OMV5 that you just downloaded and click open. And there you can see now it is in the what's considered the CD-ROM. Next, we're going to click on SATA controllers. We're going to click on the right hand one, which adds a hard disk. Create new hard disk. And again, it's a VHD. Click Next. Dynamically allocated. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger, 32 gigs, and click Create. And then for network, we're going to go from NAT to a bridged adapter, and then we'll be able to actually surf the internet. And USB, you want to make sure your USB controller is enabled and then click OK. Next, we're going to click Start. And then click Enter to continue. And then find your language and your country and your key map. And so for your host name, I suggest putting something like dot virtual so you know that this is a virtual machine then hit continue 
And then put in your root password twice. And then your time zone. And then we're going to partition our disk. And so we're going to pick our smaller disk for the OMB install, which is 17.2. Hit enter. And then that will take a little time to install. Then find your country for the mirror, then hit enter. And just pick Debian. Now click continue and then it will reboot. Okay, so now we're at the login. Let's type in root and our password we just put in. Then hit enter. And then we're going to type app get updates. And that will update our package list. And then we're going to type in app get upgrade. And that will get us the latest, or most of the latest packages for our OMB. And then we'll click yes or Y. Hit enter. Here you click OK. And now we're going to type in where it says uh, at the roots line there OMB con f d bad m populate which is right above on the second line from the top and then click enter and now we're going to type in ip and ad addr and that will give us our ip address and here you can see it's if we look two lines up 192.168.8.121 so let's switch to the desktop. And so we're going to type in 192.168.8.121, I think it was, and then hit enter. And there we are at the Open Media Vault login. So our Open Media Vault login is admin. And then the password is Open Media Vault. And then click login. And you can update your password and then uh, so this is the same as any other version of open media vault from here on in but we'll go over some quick settings here so we'll go to general settings change auto logout to one day and then click save apply and yes if we want to change our password we click on web admin password and put a new password here and here and then click save we're going to go ahead to date and time, make sure these are correct. Network, so our, we're going to check our interfaces and we're going to edit our interface. And so we have DHCP, yes, IPv6 is disabled. We're going to set in a DNS server. And then we're going to click save and this may reset our Ethernet adapter so we might have actually a different address, IP address after this. So we'll see in a second. Okay, and so if you see an error has occurred, more than likely the adapter has reset. So we'll just click OK. We're gonna go back over to our virtual box window, type in IP address again. And now you can see it is 192168 192.168.122. So we're going to go back up top here, change this to 122, and then hit enter. And yes, leave. And now we're back to our login, and we have to type in our admin and open Media Vault again, unless you've changed the password. Hit login. Save that password. And so now we should be good to go on all those other things. Uh, notifications is if you put in your email server, it will send you emails from the machine. Power management, we don't really have to worry about with a virtual machine. Monitoring is already enabled. Certificates, if you want to use SSH or SSL. Update manager, there are two updates already. So we'll just click the check mark there and update our Linux kernels, it looks like. And then click upgrade. Once that's done, click close. And then we're going to skip plugins. We're going to go straight to disks. And so we have our two disks. And so our second disk, our SB, SDB2, we're going to wipe. 
and then yes and quick and then done it's close uh, we don't need to worry about smart drives raid management for this one we're going to go to file systems and so we're going to click create and select our sdb uh, volume and click underneath and we're going to label this data disk then click OK and yes and then that will create the file system and once that's done you can click close and it may take a few seconds longer to initialize it once it's initialized highlight it and then click mount and then apply and yes and now we're going to go down to access rights and click on user and we can add a user here so we'll click add put our name in uh, if it requires an email address so we'll put that in and put in a password twice and then we're going to click on groups and so we're going to add it to the S groups, so it's already in the users, but we're going to add a few extra things there. Samba share, SSH, pseudo rights, and then click save. And there you can see our groups are there. And then we're going to click apply and yes. Next, we're going to click on shared folders. We're going to add a shared folder and so I usually have three. So the first is app data for Docker. Put it on the data disk and we're going to make this easy. Everyone read, write, click save. Apply and yes. Next, we're going to add a downloads folder. and click our device again everyone read writes and then save apply and yes we're going to add one more and this will be our media folder again our data disk everyone read writes and then click save apply and yes now under services we're going to go down to smb sifs click on that go to shares we're going to add our shares so first we're going to do app data and we're going to do guests allowed and then enable permission adherence and click save apply and yes next we're going to add our downloads folder and again public guests allowed and then enable permission inheritance and then click save apply and yes and finally we're going to add our media folder again public guests allowed and enable permission inheritance and then click save and then apply and yes and now we can go to back to settings we're going to enable Samba and just make sure your work group name is the same as the one on your network then click Save apply and yes now if we go to our network shares we can see there is our open media vaults if we double click that there's our three folders that we just created and so those are read right now we can click close and then the last thing that we can do is if for plugins, we can add in the Open Media Vault Extras. So right now it's not there. So if we go over to openmediavaultextras.org, go to the guide section, we scroll down and here you'll see this line wget-o-htt ombextras.org install bash. We're going to type that in here into the terminal. So first thing I'm going to type clear so we can see this. And so basically type that as exactly as you can and then hit enter. So if you're like me and you're not a very good typer or copier, then what you can do is actually download putty. And so go to putty.org, download putty and install that. And then go back to this page, open putty. And actually, so we're one, two, two. 
And then just type in the IP address of your server. So mine is that 122, click open. And then click yes, login as root. And your root password, hit enter. And then uh, copy this. And then paste that in there. And then that will start installing OMV Extras. Uh, once that's done, you can close that and then go back to your server and then hit the reload button up to the top right and reload. And now besides the plugins button, now we also have an OMV Extras button. So two things. So if we look at the plugins, it is actually installed all the extra plugins from OMV Extras already. And then if we go to OMV Extras, just a couple things. I did a separate video on this, but it's already enabled. Uh, basically, these two top buttons are confusing. This adds the testing repo, and this is adding an extra repo, which is currently undefined. And then we can just install Docker, remove Docker, install Portainer, Cockpits. And on the second page, you can fool around with kernels install Proxmox, uh, Clonezilla, Gparted, and there's even a System Rescue CD. So that's it for today. That's how you install OMB to OMB5 to a virtual disk. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.